In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint the Kazarkin camo color scheme, traditionally called the lightning camouflage. Now this is modeled after the Cadian 8th Kazarkin, uh, but I have adjusted some of the colors to fit my custom regiment. To start, watch my tutorial on how to paint the Cadian 707th Infantry to get all of your base colors and initial highlights in place. Please check the description below for a link to my Cadian 707th Infantry painting tutorial. That's where we'll be starting on this model. As you can see from my example, I have all of my base colors down, my Xandri dust, my Castellan green, my Rhinox hide, along with everything shaded with Agrax Earthshade, and my initial highlights already complete. You could begin the camo pattern before doing your first set of highlights but I do recommend starting after you have already done your washes. Now, to prepare for the color scheme, it's rather simple. You'll be needing only two colors, Scrag Brown and Ushabti Bone. These will be the two core colors used over top of our Castellan Green in order to create the camo pattern. You may want to have a wet palette for this project in order to have the other colors available, such as Castellan Green or Ushabti Bone, to clean up any mistakes along the way. Finally, I do want to shout out that I am using the Redgrass Games Everlasting Wet Palette for my project. And I do use this wet palette for the majority of my projects. Although I do like the Army Painter Wet Palette for when I'm traveling. Either of these are great wet palettes that I highly recommend. For brushes, I'm going to recommend the Citadel Medium Layer Brush and the Redgrass Games Zero Two Brush. These two brushes will give us the perfect control and size that we need to create the camo pattern neatly on our models. To start, let's place some scrag brown onto our wet palette. Make sure to water it down if needed to a milky consistency before applying it to the model. We will be using our medium layer brush to apply the scrag brown to our model. When applying the scrag brown to our model, we want to create very sharp, rectilinear shapes across the armor. These shapes should be things such as triangles or more squares and other types of polygons that seem to fade off the edges of the armor or if they do appear solidly within the boundaries of a piece of armor, ensure that the shapes are very odd and don't resemble anything specific. We don't want to paint any perfect squares or rectangles or triangles necessarily. We want to create things that are sharp and very fine detailed. Now, when applying the Scrag Brown, we don't have to be quite as neat. We can go back later with our next paint and clean up the edges of these shapes to make sure that they are clearly defined. When applying the Scrag Brown, don't forget that this paint is very thin, so it will likely need two or three coats. A few tips when creating the shapes on the armor. Do not let any of the shapes transition over to from one part of the armor to another. They all terminate, such as from a shoulder pad to a chest plate. Don't let either of the patterns carry over from one to the other. Make sure that your camo pattern ends from one piece of armor to the next. In addition, you can look up a lot of great examples uh, through an Instagram or Google search of the Kazurkin pattern armor or any other kind of harsh um, shape camo pattern such as this for examples of shapes that you could apply to your models. You can look at some of my graphics here uh, in the video or you could go to my Instagram and see the finished product of these Kazarkins there. In addition to the armor, we'll also be applying this to any hardware that is also painted in our camo pattern such as the backpacks. Make sure that you turn the model around and check all areas of the model to make sure there is some type of pattern occurring on at least the majority of the armored components or the other types of gear, such as the backpacks. The portion of camouflage that I am currently painting is one that is a good example of how I change up the pattern and how it terminates at the edge of the armor and doesn't carry over to any other component of the camouflage on any other piece of gear. This knee pad here has a jagged pattern, which is common with the lightning pattern of the uh, Kazarkin within the, within the Cadian 8th, and shows this of the rectilinear pattern that we are imposing across the model.
Next, we want to put some Ushapti bone onto our wet palette. Thin this down to a milky consistency and also use your more fine brush here or any brush that you can get to a very fine tip and control the flow of paint into that brush very well. When applying the Ushapti bone, what we want to do is create that fine edge to all the patterns that we've painted on with the Scrag Brown. Go along the edges of the pattern in order to create the very neat thin lines that are part of this lightning camo. When doing this, we can clean up some of the uneven or maybe even rounded edges that we've painted on with the Scrag Brown, which is a little bit thinner. We can get in there and make it a much finer, neat edge. Just now, you could see me correct a mistake I made when applying the Ushapti Bone. I accidentally blotched a little on, creating an unsightly edge to my camo pattern, so I quickly went back to my Scrag Brown and cleaned up those lines. And now, it looks as I had intended it to. One of the tips I recommend for getting the straight lines needed on this camo pattern is by moving your brush in the direction of your bristles, in the direction of your well of your brush, uh, in the direction that you want to make the line as well. Uh, this will prevent any splotching or any wide areas uh, when you're trying to paint these much finer lines. Only place this Ushapti bone along the interior. I do not place this along the exterior where the camo pattern seems to go off of the piece of armor or equipment. We need to make it seem as if the camo pattern continues on into a void that is not there. So only paint this onto the interior of your camoed area. After you've applied the camo pattern, you could go in to do some final highlights on your other colors, such as brightening up the corners of the green camo, or your leather, or maybe even the black or the metallics on your weapons. When doing this, I did not do any fine highlights or any uh, secondary highlights on the lightning pattern itself. I only used the Ushapti bone and the scrag brown. Although you could take it up a notch and edge highlight each of those and add those little finer details there at the end. It's up to you and what you want to do with your model. That concludes this tutorial. For any other tips on painting your Cadians, see my other tutorials for information on how to do it. Or go and follow me on Instagram where I post almost daily photos of my army and the games that I play where you can see my models and the details that I paint on them. As always, take care and Cadia stands.